Welcome to the introduction to Gas Laws podcast. And basically what I want to do in here is um, I'm not going to talk about relationships or, or anything like that. What I want to talk about is basic gas properties, things you probably learned back in uh, middle school when you discussed gas laws or gases or states of matter or anything like that. I just want to point out a couple things to you specifically and I'm going to list them off. Now what I'm going to do is as I go through this, let's throw in some gas into our containers so we can be looking at something. Um, what I'm going to do is I, as um, I list them off, I'm going to have them appear in blue boxes that appear on the top of the screen. So those are the important things that I want you to make sure you keep in the back of your mind and write down in your notes as you do this, as we go through this. Okay. So um, a couple of things I want to point out very quickly is the first is notice the molecules, how they move. Okay, they kind of like bounce around like marbles in a container if you were shaking the container all the time. Uh, for the most part, they go in straight lines, but they uh, collide with a lot of different things. But notice that at no point is any one of these molecules standing still. Like even if they're moving slow, they're moving, they're moving. So the first property we want to talk about for gases, and we know this entirely, is that gases are in constant random motion meaning that um, they don't go in necessarily predictable straight lines. They go in whatever direction they happen to be facing at that particular time when another molecule bumps into it or when it bumps into um, the walls of its container, then it will change direction. But otherwise, ga gases are always in constant random motion. Okay, second thing I wanna point out is that notice that there's no real spaces between any of them, um, I'm sorry. There's no real gigantic gaps anywhere in the container. So yeah, there's some spaces in between those molecules, but I'll get to that one in a second. Um, but for the most part, every single spot inside this container has contained the gas at some point in time. And that's because gases completely fill their container. And what that tells you is, um, for later references when you do problems, that the volume of the container equals the volume of the gas. Okay, so those are two very important facts. So volume of the container, I'm sorry, gases completely fill their container, so the volume of the container is the volume of the gas. So if you have a 125 milliliter container, you have 125 milliliters of gas. More often than not in problems, they will only tell you the volume of the container and not the volume of the gas because, they're, because you know they're the same number. Okay, um, number three. Notice that there are gaps between the molecules, okay? There are spaces. So, you know, gases, if we want to picture them like um, like spheres, like we do here, that's fine. But, um, but notice that no matter how you pack the spheres in, there will always be gaps between the molecules. You know, there's spaces all over, and those spaces get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller because the gases are moving around constantly. Well, you know what? For the purposes of making our lives a lot easier, we're going to just assume that those spaces are not there, that basically they're negligible, meaning that we're gonna ignore the gaps between the molecules. And that's where the volume of the container equals the volume of the gas, because we're just gonna assume that the gas molecules spread out by like gigantic blobs and completely fill the container. And I can pump in more molecules in here, and you'll see that the amount of spaces between the molecules gets less and less and less and less as I pack in more molecules. Uh, but the fact is, that um, the spaces are always going to be there. We're just going to ignore them. Okay. Now, I've packed too many molecules in here, so I need to reduce down my molecules. So I'm going to magically shrink the number of molecules. Then it's not changing. Okay, I'm going to reset this. Okay. I actually only want to put in a few molecules because I want to bounce them. I want them to have plenty of space to bounce around. Now, the other one that I want to point out to you is notice that molecules, um, notice the temperature is 300 Kelvin. We'll get into what Kelvins are, but basically the temperature is 300, okay? And notice that all the molecules are moving, but they're moving at different speeds, depending on what they've bumped into, okay? Some are moving fast, some are moving slow, but for the most part, they're all, like on average, moving about the same rate, okay? If I add energy to these molecules and I heat them up, 
you will notice that whether they're moving slow or they're moving fast, they're going to start moving faster and faster and faster as I heat the molecules up. Okay, so notice that, yeah, I've got some slow ones in there, but for the most part, they're moving faster and faster and faster and faster. And that's because the energy of the molecules and the speed of the molecules are directly proportional. So the more energy the molecules have, the higher the temperature, the faster they're going to move, okay? And temperature and energy are directly proportional. So the more temperature, the more energy. The more energy, the faster they're going to move. Okay, now something else I wanna point out, I'm gonna reset this one more time. And I'm actually going to have a very specific, I wanna have a mixture of gases. So I'm inserting 50 molecules of a light gas, something like, let's say, helium, and 50 molecules of a heavy gas, something like oxygen. So a helium weighs four grams, and oxygen weighs 32 grams, because remember, oxygen is diatomic, 16 plus 16. So notice that they're both at the same temperature, 300. But you can tell very quickly that the red molecules, the helium, are moving much faster for the same amount of energy than the heavy blue molecules, the oxygens. Why? Because um, the speed of the molecule is proportional to its weight. Um, so in other words, I'm sorry, is inversely proportional to its weight. So in other words, that heavier molecules move slower with the same amount of energy. So if I give 300 Kelvins worth of temperature to this container, light molecules will move faster than slow than heavy molecules. It's sort of like if I give you a Red Bull and I give a sumo wrestler a Red Bull and I tell you both to run, the, run around the track, you have the same amount of energy. You both have one Red Bull's worth of energy, but you, because being lighter, physically lighter, it doesn't matter whether you can run or not, you being lighter, you're going to run faster than that sumo wrestler. You'll notice that if I add energy, the same thing happens. The molecules begin to move around faster, even the blue ones, but that energy increase affects the light molecules much greater than the blue molecules do, okay? And they're still in that constant random motion. Okay, and that's it for our properties of gases. As you go through the podcast later, we're going to talk about different relationships, like what happens to, um, you know, when we change the temperature, why did the pressure change, or should the volume, what happens when you change the volume, you're like, ooh, hey, little dude, help me move the volume. So all of those things, I'm going to go through the other podcasts slowly but surely with an animation, and then I'll show you how to do all the calculations later in the unit.